I'm speechless. I still haven't processed if this trailer are real or not because it is just insane. Everything from the animation to the music and the dialogue, oh it just gives you the chills in your spine. But in this video I'm going to be breaking down the trailer to not only explain to you what is actually going on but also hidden details that will make you appreciate the animation even more. So let's get right into it. The trailer opens with the What's Up Danger song which is most famously used in the Leap of Faith scene in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Not only is this a great song that gives off all the badass energy of all the characters in this trailer, but since this song was used for the scene when Miles Morales truly became Spider-Man, the use of it in this trailer when the whole Spider-Verse is against him for his view on how to handle things questions his whole origin and what he learned in the first movie. A quote from the original movie's official trailer was what makes you different is what makes you Spider-Man. Remember, what makes you different? Let's go! is what makes you Spider-Man. And in this movie, because of his different opinion, he is being hunted down because of it. So that's the importance of this specific song being used here. But moving on in the trailer, we get our first look at The Spot, who is our main antagonist in this movie. I am The Spot. Now we've seen him in three promotional images, but other than that, this is our first video footage of him. But I think all signs here points out that this movie will be showing his origin. He does announce that he is the spot as if he's already an established character in this universe, but may I remind you that in the trailer for Into the Spider-Verse, we were also told that Miles was already an established Spider-Man. My name is Miles Morales. Brooklyn! I'm the one and only Spider-Man. At least that's what I thought. When in fact he wasn't and the movie was his origin. And that same trick can still be used here for the spot because if we look at the frames before, he's attempting to steal money out of the ATM but when thinking his powers will allow him to reach inside it, he ends up opening a portal on its surface and reaching out for groceries by accident. And there's other details like the bread falling out of his stomach and further in the trailer when Miles is in his parents meeting, you can see that after failing to steal the money inside the ATM, he decides to just take the entire ATM itself but then fails to do so when the portal opens behind him and falls right on top of him. All signs here point towards the spot being new to his powers and he is still trying to figure them out. Now what is his powers you may ask? Well basically his body is just made up of portals and can open them anywhere throughout the multiverse. So he's the perfect villain for this movie and I will explain more about it later on in the breakdown. And just to also point out, during the parents meeting when Rio snaps at Miles for getting a B in Spanish, the effect that you can see is the Puerto Rican flag as Rio Morales has Puerto Rican heritage, which is why it shows her Spanish side snap at Miles. And also love to see the Black Lives Matter badge on Miles representing his character's heritage. And Gwen also has a protect trans kid sign in her own room. But back to Rio snapping at Miles. This isn't the first time this was shown in the trailer, as just before a similar situation happened when Miles said whatever to his what parents. Wow. This really pissed off Rio, and no wonder Miles got grounded in this movie. But this is a contrast to the first movie when it was Jefferson who snapped at him, and then later came to talk to him. And in the sequel, it's now his mother who snaps at him and comes to talk to him. Now when Gwen visits Miles in his room, we can see her offering her hand to Miles. Now this shot is a reconstruction of the scene in the final battle of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where it was Miles who offered the hand to Gwen to save her. Yeah, uh, editor Sino here. Now that I've actually been able to compare the two scenes and see them side by side, I've quickly realised that it's the exact same shot, it's the exact same frames used in the trailer just for a different meaning, so um, yeah, that's just a quick update on that. Then we get this scene of the Spider-Verse, where it is announced to us that this place is called the Lobby. And in the Lobby, you can not only see tons of walkways and many different angles, but also screens that are accessible upside down as well as the right way up, showing how this space has been perfectly designed to be used as Spider-People. Next up, we get shown Spider-Man 2099 arriving through a portal into what seems to be the same place as Jessica Drew to fight the Vulture, so this may be the main team of Spider-People that goes out on missions such as these, keeping the Spider-Verse project safe from threats. And the main team being Miguel O'Hara, its founder. Spider-Man 2099, Jessica Drew, known as Spider-Woman, Pavita Prabhakar, known as Spider-Man India, Robert Brown, who is Spider-Punk, and Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider. There is also the Spider-Woman, who I think might be Rebecca Marchand, but I'm not too sure on it yet, especially since it was only shown once in this trailer, while the rest have been seen to be hanging around together and especially staying close to Miguel and at the front of the posters, which is why I'm assuming that these are the main heroes. And in this shot of Spider-Man 2099, we can see his laser webbing and how it retracts 
gets back into his web shooters after use. And then we see Gwen being handed the gizmo that allows the spider people to navigate the spider-verse and as Gwen is being handed the wristband you can see that it is all holographic and the structure of it is being built around the hologram while being thrown which resembles the futuristic era that McGuill lives in. And obviously this is when she is first recruited into the team of Spider-Men and from Miles' question on how to join this elite group of spider people as well as the fact that she is seen to be with the main team quite a lot during this trailer has me wondering that Gwen has been actually recruited to join the main group of heroes to protect the Spider-Verse that goes out on all of these missions. Which of course then we hear that Miles isn't invited to be part of the Spider team and throughout the whole trailer if you pay attention to his wrist you can see that in a few scenes he does indeed obtain a wristband showing he does eventually get trusted to use it but then Miles will use it against Spider-Man 2099 to escape. As well as a huge reference to Spider-Man No Way Home when Miguel literally name drops Doctor Strange and Spider-Man for causing the multiverse to collide. Now he calls it Earth 199999, which is a mouthful but is the name of the Earth designated to the MCU in Spider-Verse. Meanwhile, the MCU continues to call it 616. And in the international trailer, they actually tease the live action trio, Toby, Andrew and Tom with the rest of the Spider-Verse trailer and it was already rumoured that there will be live action sequences in this movie with the trio possibly making a cameo and definitely having a bigger role in the upcoming Beyond the Spider-Verse movie next year. So I don't think Miguel is getting his wish and Tom Holland will meet him soon enough. Then we get this shot of Miles running and judging from the weather and style of the city around him, which is the exact same in the shot where Miguel, Jessica and Ben are heading out to find Miles, I'm guessing that this scene is him escaping Spider-Man 2099. But look at the composition of this scene. We've got the wide shot fill up the whole screen, while the close-up comic panel filling up the bottom half. Now this is the exact same layout that is used whenever any of the Spider-Men explained who they are in the original movie. And this contrast shot where Miles is running away instead of running towards the fight is a perfect representation of who he is. This is a hero who would risk the multiverse just to save one person unlike the others. And the scene after that, we get shown Gwen hugging Peter Parker, who is Spider-Man. But if you look closely at Gwen, she isn't in her home universe as her universe would have these watercolour streaks as it's the signature style. And this can also be seen whenever she is in the Spider-Verse too. But the only place she doesn't appear like this is in Miles' universe, where there is a different art style. So I'm thinking since Gwen arrived a week prior to the events of the Collider, she visited Peter's body at the Collider. So not only did she see Peter die in her own universe, but also in Miles' universe and couldn't bear to lose her best friend one more time. So later on, we get one of the biggest hints towards the plot of the story itself. If you want to avoid spoilers, then I'll leave the timestamp on screen to skip to the rest of the details, which we still have a lot more to go through, by the way. But those who do want to hear my plot predictions, this is how it goes. They say that being Spider-Man comes with a sacrifice and that Uncle Ben is the reason that most of the spider people exist in the first place. And we also get shown Jefferson Davis falling from a ledge, meaning Miles knows that his father is in grave danger and he wants to go help him. So taking a look back at the start of the trailer, when Miles first meets the spot, he taunts him and laughs at him. And may I need to remind you what happened the last time Spider-Man ridiculed someone? Anyways, we also see that the spot being new to his powers is learning to control them quite quickly. He first realized that his powers is opening portals when trying to reach inside the ATM. Then he used this knowledge to attempt transporting the ATM itself, which backfired on him. But from the promotional images, we can also see that he does master this ability and sends Miles' kicks into Gwen. And because the spot is after Miles for making fun of him, but uh, mind you, there may be a much more deeper motive in the actual movie, but the point is that he is still hunting Miles. So when Gwen gets given the gizmo to travel the multiverse, she visits Miles and they both escape into the Spider-Verse together. This is when the Spot will realise that he can actually open portals between universes as he continues to look for Miles and they will encounter in Mumbatan, which is Spider-Man India's home universe. Now because of Miles, the Spot is now loose in the multiverse and is the only being capable of invading the Spider-Verse that Miles has created for all Spider-People, which is why he is angry towards him and won't let Miles join the group and refuse to give him the wristband that allows people to travel the multiverse. So when the spot fails to get inside the lobby, he then starts to go after Miles' family, aka Jefferson Davis, to lure him out the safe spot and out into the wild. Spider-Man 2099 and all the others know that if Miles gets out, then the spot will be back on his tail and the Spider-Verse will never be safe again. So they are willing to leave Miles' dad to die and attempts to convince Miles that Uncle Ben is the same for them. But Miles is the only Spider-Man who still has his parents. In his origin, he learned that what makes you different
different is what makes you Spider-Man and since his family is what he fights for, that's what he wanted to protect the most. So Miles escapes the Spider-Verse, goes on the run across universes, which is when we get all these scenes of being hunted by spider people as well as now being exposed to the spot. And then to retaliate, Miles might go across other universes in search of other spider people who are banished from the team and who believe in Miles' cause. Candidates being Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield who all work together risking the multiverse just to give the villains a second chance just like Miles is trying to risk the multiverse to save his father. Which is where the movie might end and leads to a multiversal Spider-Man civil war in Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse. This is just a prediction or a theory of what the story might be about and isn't likely to be accurate. But moving on from the plot, we also see when Miles is swinging through Mumbatton, the sun glare is represented in this oriental pattern which is another representation of how the different universes have different styles. When Spider-Man 2099 is chasing Miles, we can see that his eyes are red and fangs are showing. This is because Miguel is more connected to his spider side than the other spider people as he does also have retractable claws and his fangs actually has venom that paralyze enemies. Now next up we get shown the spot in this blank space with different portals opening all around it. Now if you pay close attention to the actual portals you can see this faint black line zipping between these two portals and since the spot himself doesn't have any of the black spots which is what he should look like I'm guessing that this is what goes on in his mind when he is picking portals and this is him choosing a portal or even a darker thought he is sending a message to Miles's head to make him aware of his dad's situation or you know that could be a very far-fetched idea and now for probably one of my favorite details in this entire trailer when spider-man 2099 is talking about uncle ben you can see these locators moving across lines on these screens now i'm gonna take a guess that these screens show the locations of each spider-man as they navigate the multiverse and these lines are the tunnels he has built between each universe and behind gwen you can see these lined patterns which has been prominent throughout the movie so far even in the first one and in the first look for across the spider-verse when miles falls through one of these tunnels you can see that each hexagonal ring he passes lights up yellow and behind Gwen you can actually see four yellow lights moving down these lines meaning that each of these lines are a path through the multiverse and where the paths meet is a universe itself and you can literally see Spider-Man as they travel through the Spider-Verse in person as well as trackers on screen. Now how incredible is that attention to detail? The animators who worked on this deserve so much praise because they truly have thought about every little streak of paint. Echo on a signal you wind up with a formula for interdimensional energy creation and mass and light alone can't possibly explain. Come on guys, I can't be the only one in the class. <laughs> Now during the fight between Miles and Miguel, you can see Miles placing his hands on Spider-Man 2099 and it instantly glows blue. And in the following shot, you can see how his bioelectricity appears to be absorbing electricity and glitches appear to be growing all over Miguel's suit. And since Miguel is quite obviously from the year 2099, where everything is futuristic, Miguel's own suit itself has a lot of tech inside of it. So Miles is probably draining the suit from all of its power and he's maybe even draining the power from the wristband, which removes Miguel's ability to travel the multiverse, ensuring that he won't follow Miles anymore. Now, while absorbing the electricity, you can also see that it is turning from yellow to blue as Miles absorbs it. And during the same fight scene, whenever there is a flash animation, rather than having a new art style like in the other scenes, this time it literally flashes in development sketches, with all the lines, angles and markings to help construct the scene, as well as the colour notes, Imperial Violet and Crimson Red, which are the two colours the scene flashes in. Then we get the shot of Gwen as the background around her changes scene four times, and you can also see that she has a completely new wristband now, which is lined with spikes, showing some resemblance to either her own universe or even Spider-Punk, which the styles of the universe around her do sort of match. Then we get an amazing recreation of the iconic pointing meme, where we also get our second look at both Unlimited Spider-Man and Insomniac Spider-Man. Now something to note here is that he does indeed have the updated colours on his new advanced suit, which is featured in the upcoming Marvel Spider-Man 2 game. Now in the last clip of the trailer, not only are we shown a spider horse, but we also see that Miles bursts through without a mask, gloves and boots, which really shows how the other Spider-Man has been ripping him apart throughout the chase. And lastly, I really, really do want to talk about the insane animation quality, because honestly it's just bonkers. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse has already revolutionized animated movies as more of a form of medium rather than a genre itself, and that has influenced movies such as Puss in Boots The Last Wish, as well as the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem later this year. And every time I rewatch Into the Spider-Verse, I'm still to the 
this date, blown away by the quality and animation, how unique it is, how artistic it is, and how visually beautiful the end result looks. And I genuinely have no idea how the talented team working on this has managed to take it a completely different tier above that for this movie. The work is truly stunning, and the artistic touch really splashed across more scenes here. From the lighting and glitching effects the portals create, the newspaper strips that fire from Spider-Punk's guitar, the way Spider-Man 2099 paces very badass in the rain while Jessica Drew and Scarlet Spider leaps out of portals behind him, almost an extra year of waiting for this movie has definitely been worth it. I mean, you only have to compare this trailer to the first look we were given two years ago. You can see how much everything has been developed further and turned into something completely extraordinary. Each scene just screams Oscar worthy and again, very, very truly incredible work. And it only begs the question, what will Beyond the Spider-Verse look like?